It is Monday, September 25th, 2023. Welcome to the RLS Wealth Rundown. We can review video on the All About Your Benjamins YouTube channel. Hello to all the RLS Wealth family and hello to anybody else who might be catching this on the All About Your Benjamins YouTube channel. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, on, our end, on our end, it was extremely busy. Uh, we had soccer, basketball, birthday parties, tons of stuff going on, uh, but a great weekend nonetheless, and we will take all of this beautiful weather for as long as we can have it, at least here in Indiana. So let's get to the headlines that may or may not be impacting your financial plan and portfolio. And it was a busy week of news, hence why I'm doing this video this week. Uh, you had the Fed last week and a lot of headlines I just wanted to touch base on. Um, so we'll, we'll jump right into the Fed. The Fed met. They had their notes, they released, they did not raise interest rates this time around. So they held steady, but they did have a lot of strong language saying that they would probably raise at least one more time through the end of the year, only a few more months for them to do it. But that was not received well by the markets. And coming into the meeting, the markets have not done great this month. Um, usually there's this thing in investing on Wall Street, they talk about seasonality and kind of the seasons of the year and the business cycle and the months of the year. And September is usually not a great month. October is usually not a good one either. So September is looking like it's living up to the, uh, the old tradition and the old stereotype. And I heard somebody this morning talk about how they thought maybe uh, that is the longer that that goes, so the longer that September does not do well, investors believe that and then October comes, it continues and we find a bottom and we finish the year out on the high note. Nonetheless, markets uh, and portfolios are still up year to date. We just gave back a decent amount of it. Um, you know, right now, I think the S&P 500 is down 6% uh, in the month of September. So had a good year up to this point, have a little bit of a step back, which is totally normal when it comes to investing. Two steps forward, one step back type of movements. Not anything out of the ordinary, and again, it being September doesn't mean it's what's always to be expected, but it is kind of in line with what we usually see. So um, nothing you know, really to be alarming about that. This is all a part of the game that we play to grow our money for the long term. So going back to the Fed, um, did not raise interest rates. Comments were that they would probably raise rates again, looking at inflation, looking at spending, looking at wages, all of those things we talk about. Housing still appears to be doing very well, or doing well, starting to slow down a little bit, but still not enough homes on the market for the people who are buying. Uh, the interest rates on the mortgages have had some slowdown, but people are still buying homes. So uh, the Fed's going to watch that. And again, Wall Street didn't love that they said they were going to raise rates again. So uh, the market did what it did and uh, the week did not end up on a high note. So that is the, the comment there. The other thing I wanted to hit on today just is right now we have a lot of ugly headlines in the, uh, the news right now. And uh, while I don't want to dismiss them, and I do believe optimism is the only way to live life, you have to be an optimist and take in consideration what's going on and what does that mean in the short term. Because it always matters in the short term. In the long run, things set settle themselves out and you have to believe that they always will. Otherwise, what's the point of going through life just thinking everything's going to fall apart? So uh, some of the headlines you hear hearing and we'll hear more of, government shutdown coming. So we've got, uh, you know, trying to negotiate debt ceiling and all those things we had a couple months ago coming back up. Will it lead to a shutdown of the government? Uh, people are believing that it will. Will it be long term? Will it be short term? We'll have to know, but that's on the headline. We have student loan payments picking up here next month. So October, all of those individuals that had their student loans basically frozen from COVID on uh, are going to have to start making payments again. So what does that mean to budgets? What does that mean to consumer spending and ultimately down to the economy? Some people think that it'll have a big impact on the economy. You take all that money that was being spent in keeping the consumer doing strong, which it is, and that goes to student loans, then that means less money is flowing through the economy, which will slow things down. Um, definitely a possibility. Definitely we'll see an impact on that. I just don't know how many individuals that have student loans payments coming up in October. Like what's that number in the grand scheme of the economy and how big of a hit will that be? Or will it be a, a hit but it will be one that the economy can just kind of continue moving forward with and replace from other areas? So nonetheless, that's a headline that's coming up. You've got uh, you know, geopolitical things across the globe, uh, you've got inflation, all these headlines. And um, those end up in the short term having uh, impacts on the markets, or at least we attribute market movements to those headlines. Whether or not they truly do, we'll never know. Uh, but they're storylines that continue to run. Uh, we'll have political stuff coming up as we go into next year. Tons of reasons to be scared. Tons of reasons to deviate from your long-term plan. Tons of reasons to say, I don't want to be in the market. I don't know what's going to happen. And rarely is that the right move. Uh, you might get it right and get out, but are you going to get it right and get it back in? And I still believe 
that the best approach to investing for the long term with a financial plan is to stay disciplined, stay in your diversified portfolio. You had RLS Wealth for the retirees, we've got the drift in the portfolio so that if we do see long term trends in the market going down, we'll get more conservative while things are down and we'll get back into growth mode when things go back into growth mode. Uh, but aside from that, trying to time the market getting in and out, you've seen the, the charts, you've heard the figures. If you miss this many days of the market, the best days of the market, your, your performance over the long run is drastically uh, reduced and it's tough to get that right. So the key is making sure that your goals haven't changed, that you have adequate liquidity for the next foreseeable future. That could be short-term bonds and different things. It doesn't have to necessarily be sitting in cash, but that the money you know you're going to need in the next year, 18 months is not tied to the market because we don't know what will happen. The more time we give ourselves on the market, the more likely it's going to be a positive outcome and you can stay invested. So managing the portfolio, making sure you have your income needs set aside, big purchases, those types of things. Um, and then also knowing that while we may have plans, they don't always get to go the way we want them to. There is a possibility that maybe things do get ugly and uglier for longer than we expect, that maybe some things have to be pushed back, that trip. I want to take the family to Italy next year. Maybe next year isn't the year because of things that are out of my control. Uh, while I don't have to love that, I also just have to realize that that's part of the plan and we'll get there. So while we have these plans, we have these visions, we have to be comfortable with knowing that maybe sometimes we have to adjust those because there's things going on that we can't control. And while there are people who are out there going to tell you certain things to do, they don't really know. And getting it right is really hard to do. So I've been doing this almost 19 years, staying disciplined, staying, disciplined, staying in the portfolio, staying diversified has been the best course of action through a numbers of ups and downs. Big ones like 2008 and COVID and minor ones like the fall of 2017, maybe I forget when it was, that it was ugly as well. The best course of action has always been stay the course, stay long-term invested, stay diversified, and don't make any rash decisions if you can. So I uh, just want to hit on some of those headlines. Again, there's a lot of things out there. Earnings uh, are out there as well. Uh, so just want to make sure that we touch on those, we don't dismiss them, but we also don't make them shape the way that we view the world and the way we view our financial plan. So with that, that's all I got for you today. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all in the next one.